Hi, this is Pat Moorhead with More Insights and Strategy, and we are here for another More Insights and Strategy podcast. And because we didn't scare him away, he must have had fun, and our viewers loved it. We have again Jeremy from Micron. Jeremy, how are you doing? Doing great, Pat. Thanks. Thanks for having me back. It's great to see you and great to be here with your fantastic audience. Listen, it's a it's not every day that I can bring somebody on for a huge product product announcement, but you announced today that you're shipping the world's first 232 layer NAND, correct? Correct. Yeah, it's a very exciting announcement. We're uh, announcing production okay. of our 232 layer NAND first in the industry. Now, this is great. And uh, but but Jeremy, you know, we have listen, we're a technology analyst program, analysis program here. We hope you all know what NAND is, but I do want to start. Can you tell me what NAND is? Tell our viewer, what is NAND and, and why is it important? Sure. You know, I get this question a lot from the people in my, you know, normal day-to-day -day life, relatives, friends from college and high school. Um, they don't really understand what NAND is, but NAND is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. And it's the fundamental way that we store data in all of today's digital world that people interact with from your phone to your PC, your car to the cloud, um, art, driving artificial intelligence, it's even in your TV and your gaming console. So it's just, it's everywhere around us. Yeah, it is crazy. And some of the big uh, stepping stones that I, I remember in the industry is you had PCs with spinning disks and you had PCs with NAND and literally it was like night and day in in how they were operating and you know a lot of people who are kind of in the know knew hey a, a new processor or a bigger processor is good but you know what would make the biggest difference is have, have nand versus uh spinning disk so um huge stuff and by the way uh the you had to have nand inside of smartphones otherwise they can be so small in performance so Super important, and I'm glad you you hit on the data center because, quite frankly, uh, as many applications or more applications are being served uh, out of the data center as as are being uh, used uh, uh, on the endpoint. But, well, Jeremy, congratulations uh, with with all of that. Uh, you need to stop being first to this and first to that. You're just going to get boring after a while. So, no, I'm just we kidding. Have to, we have to. Be <laughs> we have to. You know, we can't let go. We're we're not necessarily always the biggest guy out there. So, you know, we have to we have to out innovate in order to be successful. Yeah. So um, I'm hearing that all NAND has transitioned to 3D NAND uh, at this point. It, first of all, uh, is that true? And if it is, uh, why is this happening? Sure, sure. So, you know, it's not 100 percent true. Certainly we and um, some of the other NAND vendors in the industry uh, do support some what we would call a planar flash, but it's a very small portion of the overall NAND output on a annual basis, mostly for like very old legacy applications um, that haven't migrated to the newer technology. All of the new products that are being released today, all of the new uh, NAND that's being released and the vast majority of the output of the fabs today is 3D NAND. And the reason is relatively simple. You know, wafers are a very expensive commodity. And you can think of the area on the wafer like real estate in a, in a metropolitan downtown area. So 3D NAND allows us to pack a lot more bits into that very expensive real estate um, as opposed to throwing up a brand new city, um, we get more density, uh, more population density, more bit density per wafer by going to 3D. And uh, Micron's ability to scale and build effectively higher skyscrapers has allowed us to be more efficient um, than anyone else in the industry and then even ourselves last year uh, in terms of delivering more bits um, and putting more bits onto the wafers, which ultimately uh, allows us to deliver more capacity, more cost effectively and um, deliver better performance and other features that customers want. Yeah. So essentially, 
you've this announcement today is a 232 story memory building, right? There's literally going to be 232 uh, layers that 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 are on there. That, that's a, that's amazing. And by the way, it sounds very very uh, complex uh, as well. Yeah, it is complex. You know, even just going back to the beginning of 3D Flash, which really is just in say the last six years or so. Um, there was a serious question mark whether we would ever get even over 128 layers. Would the industry be able to go over 200 layers? And so to be able to prove that we can ramp into production uh, technology with over 200 layers is a momentous occasion for Micron and really for the industry as a whole. I mean, this, this yeah. is something that people thought maybe could never be done. So Jeremy, all this talk about you know layers, um, I, I've read, and maybe this is just competitive uh, chest thumping that that layers don't really matter. It's really all about um, it's really all about uh, aerial density. Can you kind of set the record straight uh, on this for for people? Sure, sure. So um, layers absolutely matter, but you know I've. I've seen a lot of the industry talk and I mean, there is merit in the message, in the fundamental message that it's not only all about layers because you could compromise a lot of things to get to layers. And, you know, to some extent you could think of um, the entire chip as um, many skyscrapers packed together. And the question is how closely can you pack them together? So, you know, what some people in the industry who may be a little bit further behind in the layer count um, try to uh, pivot the conversation to other things. And for, for the audience, let me explain what aerial density is. So what aerial density means is how many bits can you get into a square millimeter of silicon? And so for us, with the 232 layer, we're getting 14.6 billion bits, 14.6 gigabits into one square millimeter. Okay, to give you uh, an idea of what that means, in the size of around a US postage stamp, we now can put over a thousand hours of 4K video into a postage stamp. So pretty incredible. Uh, technology that we're talking about. And when I compare that aerial density that we're able to deliver with the 232 layer technology, it's 35 to 100% more bits per square millimeter, better aerial density than all of our competitors products. So is it all about layers? It's not all about layers, but you know, what we're delivering is the real deal, the complete package, including the most layers. So right now you could basically just drop the mic and 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 move forward, right? But interview over. See ya. Yeah, see you later. No, exactly. <laughs> no, listen, uh, so so far, I mean, we're talking 232 layers. We're talking, you know, answering the question, what is NAND? And unless you're, you know, not a tech person. Kind of challenging talking about 3D NAND and and then layers um, versus aerial density. Um, what's really where it all comes together is is with a customer, and uh, it's it's my pleasure to introduce um, Bill Soretta, uh, General Manager of Platforms at Pure. Bill, how are you doing? Hey Pat, Jeremy, thanks for having me. It's really hey, great Bill. to be here. Yeah, so uh, Bill, real quick, what do you do for Pure Storage? Yeah, I'm the general manager of the platform business unit, so I oversee the system hardware design. Excellent. Uh, as an industry analyst, we have, um, gosh, we've written multiple research papers on your technology, uh, the benefits that you bring to the data centers out there. It still blows my mind uh, how much you put into software, but uh, a big basis for this, you're doing some incredible stuff uh, in hardware that requires this amazing software uh, to, to happen. So first of all, uh, there's very few companies that are taking raw NAND and creating systems these days, but but you are like, um, 
what are you doing that's unique from let's say off the shelf memory? Yeah, we're we're Sorry, pretty sorry. unique. We're pretty unique. Uh, early in our history, we decided to do hardware and code uh, and software co-design. So we designed systems from the ground up. Right. And initially, we were designing the systems with SSDs, and we optimized our software to work well with these SSDs. And what yeah. we found is we were leaving a lot of capacity and performance on the table. So about five years ago, we started designing and shipping our own SSDs. Um, but they're not really SSDs. We've streamlined the firmware limit and moved a lot of the functions that you'd find on an SSD, and we've elevated it to our centralized storage OS. And that's been with that, we've been able to expose more capacity, lower latency, and, and offer better performance to our customers. We, we call that the marketing name is Direct Flash, um, and that's unique to Pure. Yeah, it it's interesting. You, one would think that doing all that value add would mean that it would be a, a hit to time to market. But in fact, uh, I see you being the time to market leader in, in a few areas. Like, what are you doing? What's the special sauce that enables you to hit a, a very early time to market? Well, OK, so it's like a vertically integrated architectural approach. And over the years in our NAND management in the software, we've, we've really adapted it and made it ready for the next generations of NAND. So as changes come along, we're e it's easier for us to, to bring it to market and adapt to it. That, that's why we're uh, one of the first companies to bring QLC to the marketplace. Um, and as a result, something like this 232 layer TLC NAND, we're able to shift to it and then expose the benefits of that product to our customers uh, more quickly than than our competitors. Yeah, it is it is interesting, and your kind of your blades and the way you do the software. That was particularly uh, it was interesting how you what you did with reliability on QLC. So keep it up. Um, you're definitely a high flyer, particularly when it comes to kind of the biggest data and machine learning. And that's when I talk to your end customers. Uh, what they bring up that, that they love about uh, working with Pure. So, hey, l let me open this up. Uh, Jeremy, I don't, I don't want to feel like, uh, you know, you're leaving you alone here. Well, but not, just, not just his end customers. I mean, I think as a vendor, we love working with Pure. Yeah. And it's, it's truly, you know, it's a great opportunity for us as a company um, to, to have the opportunity to work with, um, a company that's so capable in terms of adopting new technologies, um, new flash technologies, integrating them into um, data center storage, which is, you know, kind of the, the penultimate location for NAND flash. Um, and the experience and the opportunity to be able to have Pure as a early um, customer that we've been able to begin some um, delivery of the 232 layer product to uh, has been great. And as you mentioned, you know, Pure's expertise in terms of bringing QLC to market also is uh, quite notable. So it's great to be here with, with Bill today. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, so Bill, let's let's talk, and I'll, Jeremy, I want to get your two cents uh, on this. Uh, in the end, you know, your customers are, I mean, it's, listen, it's been the same equation for 25 years. They, my costs, I have cost pressures, I need better performance, and I need better better reliability. Isn't, isn't that always the case? But well, we always talk about it like it's something new. Um, you, forgot, you forgot lower power and oh, uh, yes. <laughs> smaller form factor. But yeah, yes. Exactly. This. So, hey, how does NAND uh, affect that? How does it uh, bring, uh, you know, we know there's this insatiable demand for NAND, but how oh, how does this help solve those problems or those challenges that uh, that, that that we talked about? Right. Well, um, I, I think the NAND, sorry, the NAND innovation cycle is really critical for keeping up with technology. So, you know, everyone's familiar with Moore's law um, and that kind of for many, many years dictated how rapidly compute could evolve in applications in the data center, et cetera. And if you're doubling the number of transistors in a 
um, CPU every 18 months, which is what Moore's law predicted uh, and which held true for about 30 years, uh, then memory has to keep up with that technology. And simply put, you know, the old way of storing bits on um, hard drives just wasn't keeping up to feed enough data and to uh, store enough data as processing um, evolved. And now you see processing further evolving uh, into the edge, into mobile, uh, into all kinds of areas where, you know, you do have major space constraints where you need that performance, where you have uh, power constraints, where you want more battery life, et cetera. And in order to keep up with the growth of these applications, oh, and by the way, you know, nowadays people don't want to pay more for their phone than they did 10 years ago, but they want to store 50 times as much data on their phone, for instance, um, or they want to keep all the pictures that they ever took, but now upload videos to their social media site and do it all for free. You know, we better be dang good at delivering that next generation technology and continuing down the cost curve while delivering all those other benefits that you mentioned that the customers want. Yeah, Bill, uh, maybe you can talk about uh, your customers. Yeah, I, you know, Jeremy and I talk about this all the time. My, my customers are not interested in the, the tech details of the NAND device, right? But they really do care about the improvements in the NAND device and how that affects their, their business. You know, they care about things like, can I run my database faster? Uh, can I run more um, uh, AI jobs? Can I design a CPU more quickly? So, you know, we can take the density and bandwidth improvements and bring that to the system level and expose that to them and let them, you know, drive, drive business outcomes. But, you know, one of the unexpected ways that we've had a lot of success with customers is with larger drives. We tend to lean in and have larger drives. And these larger drives um, are, are possible because of our OS improvements, but they're also only possible if there's more performance per die the way that this new product from Micron is giving us more performance. Because people really care about performance density. If you make like a huge, huge array, very high capacity, but it has the same performance as much smaller array, it's kind of useless to the customers. They can't stack more databases on it. They can't do more with the product unless performance density is scaling, so performance per terabyte. So that, that's really important. The other thing with larger drives is that um, they offer power efficiency. So you know, if you think about it, as the systems get larger, the amount of power consumed by the electronics in the system that isn't NAND, so the, the, the controllers and so on, is starting to become a smaller and smaller percentage. And when that becomes a smaller percentage with larger drives, the systems become more power efficient. We're, our systems can be up to 80% more power efficient than our competitors. And that the obvious way that helps people is you save money on power, but another way that that really helps customers that people always think about is most data centers, the total amount of power in a data center is capped. They're hemmed in. They have a total budget. So if we save them power on storage, they can go use that power on GPUs or, or, or compute and, and get a, you know, a better outcome from their data center when they're, when they're limited. So it really has an outsized effect for the customers. And a yeah. lot of that, you know, along those lines, a lot of the power in the data center goes to cooling the data center. And so we're able to bring the power consumption down, especially if you think about it, okay, Pure goes, they're bringing more performance and more capacity into a smaller footprint. You know, pretty soon you've got like a miniature sun inside the data center. Wow. You got to cool that thing, you know, and, and how do you do it power efficiently? Um, that is where bringing down the the perf bringing down the power consumption per performance is critical over time and bringing up the capacity to die is um, also important and you know I that is some of the great innovation that actually we're bringing forward on the 232 layer so there's a number of firsts with the 232 layer NAND um, besides being the most tiers but you know, getting back to what do I, what do I really care about? What does that deliver to me as a user? So a few things, first of all, um, it's 
delivering 100% faster uh, write bandwidth per die and roughly 80% faster read. So those are notable improvements. And you could say, well, how do you do that? You know, we do that in a number of different ways, um, but we're also uh, increasing the IO speed. So, you know, I have this analogy of, of everything um, and it's, it's related to a supermarket. So, you know, if you pretend that NAND is like a supermarket, then we have with this device, the first time that we're releasing six planes, well, six planes, uh, each plane allows a certain amount of throughput to happen on the die. And that's like a checkout line in the supermarket. And then the IO speed is like the speed of your cart. So how many carts can you get in and out of the supermarket at a time? And then we're also improving the read and write speed. So that's like how fast can the checker check carts through the lane? And when you put all of those improvements together, you know, what it says is that we're able to basically get twice as many people through uh, the supermarket as what was possible on our previous generation of Flash, which I'll say was quite competitive with anyone else's. So that gives you an idea, not just is this, is this the most, the best aerial density, we already explained, you know, why that's important, but you're getting the best performance in the industry, the fastest IO speed. Oh, and by the way, uh, we also are introducing the, the smallest package for NAND as well, so that you can put more onto those big drives in a limited amount of space. Previously, uh, most of the NAND shipped in 12 by 18 millimeter packages. This NAND we're bringing to market in 11.5 by 13.5, which is a 28% um, footprint reduction from what we were doing in the last generation with up to two terabytes per package. So quite a lot of firsts and a lot of innovation that comes into this generation of product. Wow, pretty, very impressive. Gosh, um, like I said, Jeremy, these are these are fun for me because, you know, having product leadership uh, is, is, is fun, but I know from watching Micron that you're not gonna stop and you're just gonna keep moving, in fact, uh, you know, getting getting more paranoid as you as you as you move forward uh, is is a good thing. So, I, I want to end this uh, on this. So, so, Jeremy, now that you have all this memory, you're done, right? I mean, you can just go home and like, no, seriously. What what are the next steps here for this 232 layer uh, NAND rollout? Well, I'm going to go back to my office and and see what Bill needs to get um, <laughs> get his next generation product out the door. But right after that. Um, you know, there is a journey when you launch the Flash. There's a journey because we have all these different products that support all the different end products that we talked about. So, you know, UFS, NVMe SSDs uh, in the data center, in the client, in consumer markets. So, you know, today with this announcement, uh, we, we are formally announcing that we're shipping the 232 layer in production in our consumer SSDs under the crucial um, crucial brand. The next step over the next really 18 months is going to be one after another migrating product lines from our industry leading 176 layer to yeah. the new industry leading 232 layer flash. And, you know, we don't like doing paper launches here. So, um, you know, we are diligently working and you will hear more from us as those different system level products um, get to volume production levels. Uh, but, you know, today we're starting with component and um, retail consumer SSDs. And I think that's a great start for such a exciting technology as we um, develop the additional products to bring to market. So that's what we'll be working on heavily over the next 18 months, along with um, the continued development of our next uh skyscraper which you know i can't talk about <laughs> other than to say that there is a future generation of nand and i'll be back to talk about it more i'm sure at some point in the future well gentlemen this has been a uh this has been a great uh great conversation uh you know first of all uh jeremy congratulations uh on on the big announcement uh bill really appreciate your, appreciate your insights that uh you know really helps uh 
close part of, of, of the loop. And I couldn't imagine uh, a better partner uh, to have than uh, Pure Storage. Your That's leadership cool. is, is recognized by everybody in certain, in certain workloads. And, you know, it was interesting, Bill, you were talking uh, about, and actually Bill and Jeremy, you're talking about uh, uh, power. I actually wrote an analysis about uh, your evergreen uh, system and, and how green it was in the overall scope of green. Uh, in, in the design where you don't have to throw away the chassis, a lot of software upgrades, uh, you know, moving um, moving storage uh, uh, in and out. So great conversations, gentlemen. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, coming on and making this a, a, a great uh, segment. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. So this is Pat Moorhead with more insights and strategy. I'm taking us out here. I hope you enjoyed the show. Check out the show notes. Uh, and if, uh, you know, you want to give us some comments, uh, you know where to find me on Twitter. Take care. Have a great day.